The area we are in today is referred to geologically as the San Francisco Volcanic Field and is located in northeast Arizona. Physical geographers trace the origin of their discipline to Pliny the Younger, who in 79 AD witnessed and described in a written account the eruption of the volcano Mount Vesuvius near Pompeii, Italy. Pliny described the towering eruption cloud as appearing sometimes bright, sometimes dark and spotted, as it was either more or less impregnated with earth and cinders. Today, the branch of physical geography that describes and investigates volcanic activity is volcanology. Acceptance of the theory of plate tectonics in the 1970s gave volcanologists a deeper understanding of the way volcanoes are distributed across Earth's surface. Plate tectonics explains and predicts that most volcanic activity takes place at plate boundaries, both convergent and divergent. A look at a map of plate boundaries, however, shows no such boundaries close to this area. What volcanic process, then, is responsible for the many volcanoes here? Volcanologists do not all agree. However, an emerging theory is that there is a hot spot under the crust here, similar to Hawaii and Yellowstone National Park. The San Francisco Volcanic Field is part of a larger geologic province known as the Colorado Plateau. I've come to this area of the southwestern United States because it provides some of the best examples in the world of recent volcanism. This particular location is a protected area called Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument and is about 40 kilometers north of Flagstaff, Arizona. The Benita lava flow issued from the base of the cinder cone behind me and the name of the cinder cone behind me is Sunset Crater Cinder Cone and it was originally named that by John Wesley Powell back in the late 1700s and that's the John Wesley Powell who was the first European to descend the Colorado River. I'm standing at approximately 7,000 feet of elevation or about 2,500 meters and the summit is 8,000 feet. So there's about 1,000 feet of vertical relief here. We have a pretty precise date on the eruption and we believe the date was 1,064 or about 900 years ago. Sunset Crater is considered to be the youngest crater in this particular area. Bonita is a Spanish word that means beautiful and certainly to a geologist this is beautiful. One of the beauties of it is it's 900 years old. That's very young geologically. Now this particular lava flow is made up of a, -a lava. Recall we have two basic types of lava, a, -a and pohoihoi. And you recall that a, a lava is this very sharp, large pieces, very thick what they call clinker type lava. What happens is it's very thick as it flows and it actually rolls and tumbles slowly. So this whole lava flow just kind of tumbled slowly down to my left here. Now I'm right at the edge of the lava flow so it's only a few centimeters thick but as you move out into the center of the lava flow it's estimated that it's up to 30 meters or 100 feet in thickness. The way these cinder cones work, we believe, is that as magma comes up close to the surface, it's full of explosive gas. And as it initially erupts, it ejects material out the top of the crater. And you see that big pile of material behind me is small globules of lava thrown into the air. While it's in the air, it congeals and then simply falls back down to earth and piles up as a cinder cone. Now, after a while, and they're not really sure, it could be days, weeks, or months, the explosive gas is spent and we no longer have this explosion of globules of lava into the air. At that point, the lava that's coming up out of the ground and erupting flows quietly out of the base of the cinder cone and that's what we see here in the Bonito lava flow. Now, geologists have 
terminologies and names for the type of material that's blown out of the top. But generally speaking, it's referred to as either tephra or pyroclasts. Now, when you get into the distinct names of the material, it's based on size. The largest size material that is ejected out of a cinder comb is called a volcanic bomb. Could be quite large. The next size down from a bomb would be something called a cinder, where these uh, particular landforms get their name, cinder cones. But as we get down even smaller, we get down to what's called lapilli, and finally, the smallest piece that's ejected from the cinder cone is referred to as volcanic ash. Geologists estimate that approximately 75% of the magma that was erupted out of this particular area erupted as explosive material and turned into lapilli and ash. And about 25% of it was extruded as lava from the base of these particular cinder cones. Now the type of rock that ha is in these lava flows is a rock, an igneous rock referred to as scoria. And you can see that right here. It's full of what geologists refer to as vesicles. Vesicles are areas that used to be gas bubbles that have since burst and are now just empty space. So these rocks are actually fairly light in weight. Now, the whole reason this particular area became protected on, as Sunset Crater National Monument was because back in the 1920s, Hollywood production studio came to Sunset Crater, the one right behind me, and wanted to simulate the eruption of a volcano, and they proposed to put a lot of dynamite on the summit, blow it up, and take the picture. Well, a lot of people didn't like that idea, and so this protected area was born as a result. Now I mentioned that the eruption took place in about the year 1064. At the time this area was inhabited by a group of um, aboriginal people referred to as the Sinagua. Now the term Sinagua means without water, which is a testimony to the harsh environment of this particular area. And when this cinder cone behind me erupted in 1064, there is evidence that the Sinagua had to flee and leave this area leave their homes. So it was a very difficult time for them. SP Crater is one of the best preserved cinder combs in the world despite being approximately 70,000 years old. The cone is approximately 700 feet high and the crater is approximately 200 feet in depth. The crater is well preserved because of an erosion resistant ring of fused volcanic material along the rim of the crater. The lava flow from the base of SP Crater extends for approximately 4.5 miles and is 200 feet thick in the middle. <laughs> 